Number three, curtain. Say and write. Curtain. We say what class? We say curtain. But we spell curtain. Excellent. Next word is repeat. Clap it out. Repeat. Thank you. What was the first syllable in repeat? Class. Ooh. What was the first syllable in repeat? Class. Ooh. Re. Re. What's the first sound you hear in re? Ooh. Write it. What's the next sound you hear in re? E. We will use at e. Say and write. At e. We've gotten to the end of the syllable. Syllabicate. Excellent. The word is repeat. What's the second syllable, Seneca? Peets. Excellent. Class, what's the first sound you hear in peets? Say and write. I really like Dominic's posture. He looks ready. What's the next sound you hear in peets? E. Class? E. Class? E. We will use E A A. Say and write. E A A. We're spelling peets. We have P E. What's the next sound we need to represent? All together? Excellent. Um, one thing. I thought it was interesting, Lodovico, when he talks about Othello, he calls him rash and most unfortunate man. So even Lodovico, he's saying it's, it's unfortunate, he's an unfortunate man, and he has a sense that it's not all his fault, but he's also rash. He did do something wrong that he didn't trust his own wife, and he trusted Iago instead, but he still has that unfortunate side that it was all against him and not completely. Also, Even on the begin of Act Two, I mean, uh, Act Five, Scene Two, at the very beginning, at page two thirty-five, he says, "It is the cause. It is the cause. My soul, let me not name it to you, Shastar. It is the cause." So he thinks he is somehow responsible for the happenings by thinking that it's his soul is the cause of her infidelity. And also, Adelo uh, could have chosen not to believe that. Uh, Desdemona is unfaithful because um, going back to Amelia's discussion with Desdemona about whether women can be faithful or uh, they can be unfaithful just as men can be unfaithful, Desdemona uh, says that um, they that no woman would be unfaithful to her husband. A woman wouldn't choose to be unfaithful to a man, but uh, Othello takes Amelia's side. We saw uh, Othello say that the reason why he loved Desdemona was because she pitied his stories. And then we saw Iago picking at that saying, oh, he just told her all these lies and that's why they love each other and just because of these stories. And so he automatically saw a fault in their love, it seemed like. And then he picks at, he picks at it trying to make Othello jealous. So we see that as soon as Desdemona starts pitting another man and not pitting um, Othello, then we see that he gets really jealous and that he even kills her over something which he never even asks her about. He never even goes to Desdemona. He's just getting one side of the story and it's that just the rash smothering. So I think Othello is definitely dying. Right, right. So this is, this is why she, you know, so she has kind of made this determination already. And, and this determination came after after her first love. after her first love. The felt is uh, oh, it'd be like cheated. Mm -hmm. After my first love, cheated me. Understood. Oh, cheated me. Uh, this the captain mm -hmm. is gonna be like. Deceived. Deceived. Can right. Be deceived by death. Uh huh. And you could you could say wound. I mean, okay. we we do have this as wounded. So yes, if you were to produce you know a beautiful translation, we would want to avoid you know using words that are too similar, too close to one another. Okay. Um, but what is what is a, a phrase that we might use with wound? Not nourishing a wound. But like. Tending to it? There's there's another word. 
like nursing. Nursing. I think that's a really good way to go. Okay. And talk about it as a group. Um, we'll we'll see what different ideas you have, and then actually do it. So you don't need to measure it yet. I just want you to spend a minute or two drawing what it is you would do and coming up with a plan, and then we'll we'll measure it after. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Go ahead and get started. So what is our method to find the area under the curve? So this must be a semi, this must be a quarter circle so thing and then you take the curve. So I just, I know that you just have a sheet and then take this. So I know the area, I know that the area of the area is prime square root. So I take pi over 2 root square root over 0.6 divided by 4 root 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 which is not all that was close to that. Very close to that. Um, I think, <coughs> I think another um, way we could do this is Well, I think it would be pi. Okay, so what are you working I was just gonna... I think what, another thing we could do is find a way to a lot of different ways. Yes. Um, what I did is I, I just noticed that this is a quarter circle. Okay. So then I just, I just okay. found the area of a whole circle. Yeah, I got and it. And hold on to that thought for a moment. But I know that curve isn't always going to be a circle. Right. So we're going to work on that. Okay. Are we, are we close to being ready? You guys have a method? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about um, let's talk about a few different methods that you have. So we'll grab a couple different colors. Um, I saw up in front, so uh, Ms. Wynn, what was the idea that you guys had? Um, what I did is I made it a right triangle. Okay. So, drew the line from the two, a straight line from two to two. Okay, so you drew a straight line from two to two, and what are you going to be calculating? Um, the hypotenuse. Okay. In that case, which I got would be the square root of eight. Okay. And so this shape right here that you're going to use to find the area is going to be a triangle, right? Okay. <coughs> so Miss Wen has her triangle, and can we say this together? Uh, area of a triangle would be what? One half base times height. One half base times height. Okay, so we've got one half base times height as our area for that. <coughs> other ways in which you have done it. Other ways. What would you have to here? Alex, what do you got? I confused it with the binomial. Ah, the binomial. How come? What's up? How so? Because I just thought of i and then to i minus one for the two exponents and now two um, coefficients of binomial. Yeah. Was anybody um? Somebody was asking me, how do we know that's not an imaginary I? Because I is not an imaginary Because it's in the context of sigma? It's in the context of sigma, but also the dummy variable, if you are going to have the imaginary number I in there, what do you think you might do to change the variable, the, the dummy variable? Change the variable. Okay, you'll switch, right? You guys got that? You're going to switch it over to J, the other kind of standard dummy variable in sigma notation, switch it to j. So that's, that's what you end up doing to avoid that issue. So always assume that i is not imaginary. We're going to have to fix it quite a bit, but does this one seem to be closer fitting to the actual da data? Misha. Up here, you're asking about Misha? No, the arrow. Oh, the cycle. One prey cycle. Yeah. What is? What do we seem to mean by cycle? That's going to be our time, but let's see if we can get Misha's question. Let's take one more minute. What do we mean, Max? It's a wavelength. Oh, a wavelength. Does that seem to be a wavelength? What's our definition of knowing if, if it's a wavelength or not? Same what? Same slope. Same, same slope. slope. Does that seem to be the same point on the blue graph with the same slope? Does that seem okay, Misha? All right. All right, thank you guys. We're done. We'll call them wrap for the day.